Hi, my name is Aiden. In this screencast, we will evolve our ASP.NET 5 seed project to implement validation for ASP.NET 5. As for now, we have a super simple login form with no styling at all, and we have a login view model uh, that contains a username and password. And if we render the page, we can see that the form looks exactly as, a, as we expect it to look. And when we post this form, we'll post to the off controller, which doesn't currently validate the login view model at all and doesn't provide us with feedback about how the, valid, how the login went. So what we want to do now is implement some useful validation that will give feedback to the user about the errors that the form contains. And at the end, we're also going to style our, our view with bootstrap and we're going to use jQuery validation, more specifically an obtrusive validation to avoid posting to the service side to do some simple validation that we can do on the client instead. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna mark our username and password as required. I'm gonna use the system component model data annotations and we're gonna do the same thing for password. Now when we post this to the, to the off controller, we're going to want to check that it's valid. We always want to check if the model state is valid on the server, even if we have client-side validation implemented with jQuery. Because we never know if somebody tries to post to our controller with some rogue values, they're not always going to use our login form just because we provide, provide one for them. So let's create a model state, let's check if model state is valid and just then try to actually sign in. Otherwise, we'll return the view containing some errors. Down here, we're gonna add one more thing. We're gonna add a model state error if the username and password was incorrect. So if it didn't redirect to the root of the application, it means the user has provided an invalid username and password. So we're gonna add a model error here to review model. And we're going to pass the empty key, which means the error is on the login view model, on the, on the view model itself and not on a property of the view model. So here we can type in the message, username or, or pass, password is incorrect. All right, so now let's extend our login form to actually display these errors for us. Along with the input for the username, we're going to want to provide uh, a label for it as well. So once again we can use the ASP4 tag helper to tell it which which property this is the label for. Let's put this into a div which we will style with a form group later when we added bootstrap. So we're not gonna put username here. Instead we are going to use a display attribute on our view model, which will en enable localization later of the application if we want to implement that. So we're going to say that the text will be username. So in the in our case, it's actually just going to display the same the same text as the username and password property names. If we don't provide a display attribute, it will display the actual property name instead when we use the ASP4 tag helper. So along with the input and the label, we also want to display the validation message. So we're going to use a tag helper called ASP validation4 and then pass in the property name of the, of the view model again, which is username. And I think it's easier if we just copy paste this and replace it with a password. So we want the display attribute of the password property on the view model. And we want to bind to the password property. And here, let's not forget to put in the type password so we can't see what we are typing. And we want the validation message for password as well. And Let's encapsulate this into a div as well, put it in a form group later. 
if we switch back to the browser now and refresh, if we try to log in now, we can see that we got the username and password uh, fields are required. But right now we are actually we are actually posting back to the server even if we don't need to because if we take a look at the actual HTML, we can see there are data attributes that contains these validation messages. So we could just as well do this in the browser instead of posting to the server and then getting the errors from there. So let's do that next. Or actually, before we do that, let's see what happens if we type in username and password that are incorrect. So what, what I was hoping for was that I wanted to display the, the view model error tell, telling us that the username and password was incorrect but we didn't see anything and that's because we actually didn't try to render the message so at the top of the form let's add a div with a new tag helper called validation summary which actually takes a parameter validation summary and then we can tell it to only show model errors uh, or we could display them all, which would include uh, property errors as well. But let's just display the model errors. So we come back here and refresh. We can see that we are displaying the view model errors as well. And if we try to post with nothing, we display the property errors. And in this case, we don't display property errors. We just display the view model errors. So now let's style this with Bootstrap and also add client-side validation by enabling jQuery validation. So we're gonna get these client-side libraries with uh, Bower instead of uh, npm. So we're gonna add a new a new file to our project, and it's gonna be a Bower configuration file. And let's add a couple of dependencies here. We're gonna add jQuery bootstrap, jQuery validation along with jQuery validation unobtrusive in case the user has disabled JavaScript in the browser. And now we can see that we are restoring our packages and our Bower RC file tells Bower to put the libraries into www.root.lib. And now that we're restored, we can see that we have a couple of new folders in here. So let's switch back to our view. And let's create a valid HTML page to begin with. So we're gonna have an HTML tag, a head, put the form into the body. And at the end, we're gonna include jQuery. And let's also include Bootstrap. And in the header, let's include the Bootstrap CSS. And it looks like Visual Studio is a bit com confused since this is a MVC view and uh, the lib folder is actually located in our www root folder but this is actually fine so let's not worry about that for now and after we have included this let's also include our jquery validation library jquery validate let's include that right after jquery and then get the jquery validation unobtrusive and include that after the validation so that's important and if we save now, switch back to a browser. When we post now, we don't actually do a full page refresh. We can see nothing happens. We are doing the validation in the browser now instead. But if we post it, then we do a, a full page re refresh and get the username and password was incorrect uh, from the server. So that was pretty easy to do. So now let's just give this page some styling and we'll be satisfied with that. Let's put it all into a container.
and let's put it in another div and offset the columns a bit call md6 and call md offset 6 down to reform and and in the same div put in a header that will say login so when using column d you must also specify a row so let's put it in a row and now let's style this as a form group and the label will just be a label but the input field we're going to give it a class of form control do the same thing for a password control password input and for our uh, validation messages let's give it a nice and subtle look by giving the class text muted do the same for a password validation message. I don't want to offset by six, by the way, so let's offset by three. All right, so let's take a look at how this looks. Come back to your browser, refresh. You can see that the form looks a lot nicer. If we try to sign in without using any password, we get that the fields are required. And if we put in something that's wrong, we see the validation message. All right, so I'm pretty satisfied with how this looks. Let's try to actually sign in with a, with a valid user. And as always, I'm forgetting the password. You can take a look in our seeder, copy paste it. save the password and we are fetching our data all right so that was some validation for you guys hope you guys enjoyed this video so until next time have a nice day